Hey everyone, Rodney Smith here, and I've been joined by Sean Brown of Mr. B Games, and hey. you've set up a game here for me. It's Realm of Heroes. Yes, sir. When I first saw you setting up, I thought, oh, Carcassonne, we've got little green tiles. And then I saw all these warriors and soldiers, and I realized, no, no, this is going to be a little more bloody than that, I think. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so tell us a little bit about what, what this game is. So the premise of Realm of Heroes is uh, the kings kind of passed away in, in, in the kingdom. And They're always doing that, aren't they? They're always it. passing away. <laughs> yeah, okay. And so we're all rival families, all trying to ascend to the to the crown. Kind of okay, okay. And uh, the objective of this is to take out everybody else's king. Wow. Last so, man standing. So is, is, how would you say this is, is it more of an Amerithrash or a Euro? Like, is, are we rolling dice? Are we? Uh, so no dice, no okay. charts, no luck. Everything uh -huh. is straight. Uh, on your turn, you get one upgrade and you get one action. And that's it. Oh, neat. And there's rules for movement. There's yep. rules for terrain. There's rules for buildings. Yeah. So that's one of your upgrades. You could do a building or you could recruit a new soldier. And combat is resolved by every character has a number on it. Yes. If your number's higher than the other, you win. Okay, so do you think we could go to the table and just take a closer look? Absolutely. Okay, great. So here we are. We're set up for a four-player game, and what we're going to do is we're going to show you just how Rodney and I are going to take a turn, basically. Great, okay, uh, sure. I'll be the yellow leader. Rodney will be the purple leader, just so we have a little bit of distance. Nice. And it kind of give you an idea. Uh, so what we predetermined is we randomly put out all these tokens, which designated who owns what. Okay. Uh, I was lucky enough that I had a pretty big kingdom dealt out right away. I had four. How convenient for you. Uh, very convenient. <laughs> Whereas Rodney only had three. Right. Uh, you know, and I like to say that that's a designer perk, but I didn't design this one, <laughs> okay. so it has to be luck. Right? All right, sure. <laughs> but, Fair enough. Uh, so this is my most important character. If he's ever captured at any given time, I'm out of the game. Okay. So the reason I put him right next to my tower is towers project a zone of control around everything adjacent to them. Yes. And a tower is worth a strength of two. My leader's only strength of one. So somebody, if they wanted to attack my leader, would have to be a strength of three or higher. Okay. Currently, there's nobody on the board with strength of three or higher, so my leader's safe. So one of the things you can do on your turn is uh, the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to check for plague. Uh, so what happens is if a character dies in the game, uh, let's say somebody had a peasant over here, right, and uh, they weren't able to support it. And support means in their area you have to have enough fields equal to their strength. If you don't, uh, then they perish. Okay, fields under your control. Fields under your right, control. Okay. So if people start nibbling away at your territory on both ends, all of a sudden, and you have two or three characters, if you can't support even one, you lose them all. All right, gotcha. When that happens, they flip over and become plague. Okay. So at the beginning of your turn, any area that doesn't have a, a character or a building you're gonna just start moving plague. You're gonna just start, okay. it's gonna just start rapidly oh dear. moving around. Right. Now it's really easy to contain. All you have to do is move into a space and the plague goes away. Okay. Of course you need to own it or move into it to cause combat to take it over. Uh, I can upgrade a building sure, or I could recruit. So if I were gonna upgrade a building, I have this path to choose from. If I have a tower on the board, I can change it to a wizard's keep or a castle. A castle is a strength of six, so it's the strongest to defend, and it has a zone similar to a tower. A wizard's keep is a four, but it projects two squares in all directions. Okay. So it gives you a wider zone of control. Area of control, all right, yeah. Yep. So if I wanted to play defensive, I could beef up my defenses right away. If I wanted to go on the offensive, I might go in here and draft a peasant. Hmm. The reason I draft a peasant is these guys are always free to draft as long as you can trace a path back to a building. You can always recruit a peasant. Right. From a peasant, in future turns, I have the ability to upgrade him. I can start training him in the path of magic, or I can start training him down the path of the sword. Right. So if I go to the path of the sword, I can become a warrior, which he doubles in strength. If I go to the apprentice, he's a weaker character. He's only a strength three. The cool thing about an apprentice is, let's say I move into this square. There's nobody there to control it, so I win the battle. I would remove this token, and I would place a uh, yellow token. Sure from my reserve, yeah. and that's now my new land. His special ability says, after he's done with a combat, he can magically convert anything adjacent that's empty. <laughs> so he could sit here and go, oh, and I'm gonna ooh, magically <laughs> right, make right. this land, and I'm gonna turn it yellow. Uh, and I'm grabbing pieces from over here on this board. Of course. Normally, you have a supply. I, normally yeah. I have a supply. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, so that would be basically me taking a, a, my first turn, and I have already expanded my empire to six, which means, uh, you know, I could upgrade this guy to a higher level, either a wizard or a sorcerer, or I could bring on another peasant, which would now give me five points worth of characters. Right, so it's not just about the values, they also have special abilities as well yep. that you can use. Okay, absolutely. Right. 
Uh, so then uh, on your turn when you're over here, you were purple. Uh, maybe you decided, you know, I'm just going to upgrade my, my uh, tower over here. Right. So on the back side of, the, of most of the towers are the, are the castles. Okay. And some of the wizard keeps also are double-sided. And okay. that just gives you uh, ultimate optimal, optimal ability. Each player is only limited to two buildings ever. Right. So okay. uh, you've now upgraded to a castle. You can go no bigger than a castle. But you could build up to one more building and upgrade it again. Uh, and you're, you're kind of playing the, uh, I'm in a really good spot in the corner, so uh, maybe you upgrade to a castle, and then you take your leader, and you run over to here, and then you're able to upgrade that area. So now you've increased your zone of control to four. So what am I trying to do to win? How do I win, and, and sort of how long do I have to do that in? Uh, so ultimately, to win, you have to take out all the other leaders okay. on the board. So Last we were playing stand, standing. Yep. Here, right. And they generally fall down in rapid fire succession. So usually when one guy's out, it's usually less than a turn or two. It usually doesn't even make it around the table before the other So two even though there's player elimination, you're not looking at sitting out for like another half an hour while the rest of the people have fun and keep playing. Correct. Okay. And most of the time when you get knocked out, you really want to see that. Is that, is that <laughs> right. one of us? Is he going to go down, yeah, go yeah. down or is he going to actually? Start cheering and rooting for the and, players. And yeah. We've seen it multiple times where the guy who, the first guy that gets the knight and just starts to just mop up the land, uh, every piece also has a weakness. So even though that looks like that's the winning move, all it takes is one guy to come in and snipe one little piece of land in the back, and he can't support that powerful piece, and the guy turns into play. So when is this releasing? Is it out now? Uh, this actually comes out on Monday. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, uh, yep. so, so we're in March here in 2015, yeah. so very Absolutely. soon then. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. excellent. Well, thanks for giving me a quick overview. Right, I really appreciate, appreciate that. it. Yeah, you bet. We've got a twofer here. A second game has been set up, right? It's Clockwork Kingdom. That was two for 11. I was oh. two for one, but I realized Your math, that. not four. It's ideal. Four for 11. <laughs> that, was, this, that would be a much longer video. Uh, so we're going to stick to two. And this is Clockwork Kingdom, right? Tell me a little bit about this. Very different looking than the last game we were just looking at. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, more of a worker placement game. Okay. Uh, has a little bit of that Euro feel. Reminds me of, uh, you know, like Age of Empires 3 or um, St. Petersburg. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, games of that kind of... Uh, you know, I have a set number of pieces. I can only go in so many places, but I have way too many choices. They're all really, really good. Right. That's the pain is trying to decide. I'm guessing these are the, uh, like your workers? Yeah. yeah. So okay. this is another one of those games. It's also perfect for the two for one where the King of Clockers passed away. Okay. And we're all trying to take over. Sure. sure. There's uh, four simultaneous wars that are happening on the board at any, at any given moment. Uh, and you can choose to start focusing your guys on the battlefields and earn victory points that way. Or you can focus on all the different activities going on in the city to kind of make your faction stronger. So that when you get into the war, you're more equipped. Absolutely. Okay. I see, I see. What kind of things do you need to boost your troops? Uh, so at the very beginning of all turns, everybody starts out with five automatons, just your basic steam-powered robots. Right. So they're going to go out and do your bidding. Um, then there are specialty characters. Uh, there's an artificer, an uh, alchemist, and a professor. I probably got those backwards. No, nope. okay. look at that. Okay. <laughs> You're good. They're, well, they're only named on one side. <laughs> right. so like, well, well done. But uh, these are characters that give you some type of a special bonus. So the automaton can do any job, and he can do it just average. Right. Uh, but if you have a professor, and you put him in the workshop, he can do workshop things better than anyone else. So typically, if I put a robot down here in the workshop, I can grab a schematic. Mm. And then I can put it on my worker spot in my yard, and now I know how to build that specific, specific item. So okay. I can build a fortress. I know now have the schematic, I know how to build a fortress. Right. Once I have acquired all the goods that I've gotten via the market, <coughs> excuse me, or any special items via the ruins or production facilities, once I have the goods, I can then build that actual building from my schematic, and I would move it down here into my production facility. And then I would actually start gaining the benefit of whatever that. Yeah, these is. appear to have little powers written on them. And right. Like so that. everything has okay. some kind of a super ability. Like this uh, brass throne here says that when I place a worker uh, in Kings Park, uh, I gain one random resource every time I do it. So just uh, by picking my turn order for next turn, I get a free resource. Right. Normally, when you go there, you get nothing but turn order. All right. All right. And basically, play uh, works like this. You can go anywhere you want on the board, but you only get to place one character, and then it goes to the next person. Once everybody's placed their characters, you start at location one on the clock and you resolve the whole game board in clockwise order. Yeah, because this is a big circular city. Absolutely. Looks like a clock. Excellent. All right. Absolutely. Great, and, great. and the game will play nine turns, and what happens is after three turns, you score. Yeah. So you score how all the battles work, uh, score up all the victory points that you had at that point, 
and everybody totals up, and then all the battlefields are wiped off, and they're available to fight next turn. Okay, so you're going to go through one, two, three, three battles in total, or three calculations three of Three calculations scores. of yeah. score, right, okay. and at the very end is the final tally. Okay. Um, and so basically how these areas work is the market, if I simply put a character, say like right here, yeah. that space says steel, at the end of the turn, once everything resolves, I take my automaton back and I collect a steel resource. Right. And of course, I, that's what I, I need one steel and three brass to, to build these items. Yeah. Exactly. So that's kind of what my goal is. The alchemy lab is kind of an area of control. I might put two guys here. Right. Because if I have the most in there, then I win an alchemy stone. Uh, and I get this cool little stone. I can put this on my map. And then what this does is this allows me to change copper into steel or steel into copper. So if I'm really rich in steel and I keep finding right. steel everywhere, but I can't find damn copper. Literal alchemy in the right. game. Gotcha. I can literally yeah. go in and convert okay. it. Uh, and of course, where really cool guys like the alchemist come in is if I put an alchemist in the alchemy lab, he counts as two people. Right. Uh, down here in the ruins, anybody that goes there just gets to flip and keep a card. And these are all rule breakers in the game. Okay. They're little things special that say, abilities, yeah, yeah, some special ability, something that says, hey, if you're last place on a battlefield, play this card when it's time to score and you're actually first place. Or something like that, yeah, right? They're yeah. little things that break the rules. In the university, if I put an automaton here, next to that space, what happens is, when that turn resolves, I get a professor next turn. I'm going to the university no, to train right. my, my guy to turn him to something right. better. Uh, over here at the factory, this is another area control. And this is one where if you put the artificer in, the, in here, it counts as two. Uh, and the artificer also gets a discount in the market. Okay. Uh, he, gets, uh, he can pick any good he'd like, even if there's no spot available for him. Sure. Uh, but these production abilities are great because uh, they come up and that's a foundry. It makes one unit of steel every turn. For the rest uh, of the permanent game. production. Permanent player. production. Okay. So uh, you get that, and then all of a sudden you uh, couple that with your alchemy stone that makes steel to copper. Now you're making two of the four goods pretty much at will. Nice. Uh, so there's lots of good ways to get some really good combos. Yeah, together. that's neat. And then the last thing is King's Park. Turn order? And uh, that's turn order for, mm -hmm. the, for the following turn. It's always in contention on turn three because it's the tiebreaker, and if you're tied mm -hmm. in the battle, all of a sudden you put your guy in first place, Right. you're, you're going to score the points, the and your buddy isn't. Uh, and then the farther you go back in the turn order, the, the, uh, the catch-up mechanic there is uh, if you say six, second or third place, you actually get to draw ruined cards. So okay. you get a little bit of some kind of a bonus. So uh, the game goes the nine rounds, you score the points, and you got a winner. Yeah, right. absolutely. So is this, is this a game that's currently out now, or is it coming out as well? Uh, this one also comes out uh, retail on Monday. Wow, everything's happening for you, like, right, yeah, <laughs> right you, quick. You know, it, what's interesting... <laughs> You're at this show, and it's like, it, here's the game, and it's going to be in stores. Yeah. Both of these games were scheduled to come out for me in April. Right. And uh, I had a reprint of my, one of my other games, Spurs, mm -hmm. and it was supposed to be here in late January. I told everybody February. Yeah. Uh, both of those containers got stuck in the Port of Los Angeles. Like a lot else. of people yeah. were stuck. Yeah. I mean, hundreds of boats yeah. were in this harbor. And uh, I got lucky. One of my containers came through, and it was this one. Well, your fortune. I mean, you're able to show, show, it, show it here, and you're able to, to show it to me, and, and to you guys as well. So I hope you enjoyed getting a look at the Clockwork Kingdom, and uh, you'll be able to look for it on, on store shelves very soon, right? Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. All right. Thanks, well, thanks. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. Thank you.